Hey guys, Ryan with Husky Moving here, Arlington, Massachusetts. We do tons of work in the Boston area. Um, we do a lot of hoists around here, and I did one yesterday. I was thinking it was a good idea. I've been meaning for a while to do one of these videos. Every once in a while, I see a video online of people hoisting stuff, and um, some of them go horrifically wrong. Some of them go amazing. I watched one the other day that was pretty cool. They had a different way of doing it than I've ever seen, and it was awesome. But um, I'm going to go through a video here, hopefully teach you guys how to do this um, properly. And there's a lot of... Um, Little techniques, this job is like any other job you're ever gonna do. Take the time to do it properly. The goal is you do all the work in the front. Prep work always takes the most time, but when you do the prep work correctly, the job itself should take a very small amount of time and be done safely, and that's the key here. Um, what we're gonna do right now, I'm gonna turn the camera around. Maybe not. So this is the dresser I'm going to be working on. It's a smaller dresser. I'm doing that intentionally because I want the video to be done quickly. The uh, principles behind what we're going to be doing are going to apply the same no matter what piece of furniture you're using, um, whether it's a huge piece of furniture or a really small piece of furniture like this. The reason I'm using this is because I want to be able to do this quickly, show you guys the principles and have you understand the principles because um, the principles will apply to literally everything. Um, and then there's been some adjustments that we've made over the years um, things that we were doing when I first started doing this that I realized as time went on, I did enough of these things that they could be done really uh, a little bit safer by making small modifications. So at this point, um, knock on wood, I feel like I have a really good system of how to do this and do it safely and um, not put anybody in jeopardy or the house in jeopardy or the least amount possible. Um, anytime you take on a task like this, there's going to be in some inherent risk. But um, our goal is we minimize the absolute least amount of risk, both most importantly for the guys I'm working with, first and foremost, because um, you can always replace a dresser or something. You cannot replace someone if they go over the side of a house um, and get seriously hurt. Um, so do me a favor. If you're watching this, um, don't cut corners. Watch the whole video, pay attention. If this is something you do for a profession or even if you just need to do it one time, take the time to do all these steps. Um, a lot of this stuff is stuff that you're gonna get to a point, you're gonna go, oh, I don't need to do this, I don't need to do this, why am I doing this? Um, keep in mind that this isn't about you, it's not about your ego. Um, if you're a professional, it's only about the customer, their house and their property. So you gotta leave all the ego stuff behind. Um, I run up on people a lot where uh, especially guys, it tends to be a real issue with, not so much with, with girls, but with guys in particular. Sorry guys, but it is what it is. Um, do a lot of stuff very ego driven. And oftentimes in the moving business, I've, I've found that guys in particular have a really tough time um, putting their egos aside and doing what's best for um, the piece of furniture of the house. And what I mean by that is a lot of times, like when you look at this, you'll notice that the, the drawers are all out. Um, anytime we do something that's even remotely challenging, we'll do what we can to remove the, whatever weight we can from the piece. And it's not because um, we can't handle it. I'd like to think at this point I can handle anything, literally. Uh, that's not what it's about. It's about making sure that the customer's house and their property has the absolute best chance of um, returning to them in the same manner that they got it. They gave it to us, excuse me. And so what that means is I got to put my ego aside. Like it's not about me. Um, I think I can lift pretty much anything properly and do it well. Uh, but it's not about me, it's about them. And sometimes you do this stuff just to put people's fears um, at bay a little bit. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to be hoisting something, um, I say this with as much respect as possible, but be smart about how you do it. Don't be a moron. There's no sense in, if you're going to hoist a dresser, there's no sense in hoisting a dresser in four um, drawers. When you just do a, a bare dresser with no drawers in it uh, and walk the drawers up the stairs. It just It, it makes no sense to me, but I, keep, I see people doing it all the time. Um, so just keep that in mind. If there's anything at all that you can remove from the piece to make sure that the piece is safe and as light as possible, um, you should be doing that as a professional. All right, so the first order of business is you're going to wrap the piece. You want the entire front and the entire back wrapped. You want to make sure it's not going to get um, punctured. You want to make sure it's not going to get scratched. It's going to be most likely um, hitting the side of the house on the way up uh, and also have to get um, jackknifed over the edge. So you want to make sure that this thing is completely wrapped up uh, top to bottom. The next step in this process is we're going to run the first line. Um, what you want to do is you want to look at the piece. 
You want to use an educated guess on where the center of gravity is. I'm going to guess on this piece because it's a giant box. It's going to be like pretty much right in the middle. And then you're going to run a strap significantly above the center of gravity. So if we're assuming this is the center of the gravity, we're going to run a strap like roughly up here towards the top of the piece. The reason why we're doing that is because what happens is if you hit the center of gravity and that's where you put your, your initial strap, the piece, when it goes up in the air, is going to want a pendulum end over end. We don't want that to happen. That's, that's no bueno. And so what we're doing is we're purposefully letting the center of gravity hang below the point where we're going to be pulling from. And what that's going to do is it's going to force the piece to want to go back down to the ground, which is what we want. We're forcing it up. The piece wants to go back down due to gravity. So hopefully this thing, if we do it correctly, is going to stay straight up and down, not rock side to side, not go end over end or anything like that. And that's very key. All right, so always go above the center of gravity. It took me a little while to figure that out. Common sense, but you know, when you first start doing this, you're not 100% sure what you're supposed to be doing. Go well above the center of gravity. We're gonna run a strap going like this, kind of following this line of tape here all the way around. I'm gonna do a cam, I'm gonna shut the camera off, do that, and then I'll show you what it looks like. We use lifting straps. These are purposely designed for certain things in the moving business. They're not designed for this use, but we use them for this use. Uh, because they're cloth, they don't mar up the piece, uh, they're easy to use, and that's how I've always done it, but you can use anything, you can go down to your um, basement, grab some rope, you can go to a hardware store, anything that's going to go around the piece and allow you to tie it off tightly, you can use, doesn't matter what it is, um, you probably have, there's probably a good chance you have something you could use at your house if you need to in a pinch. These are what these straps look like, they're called cam buckle straps, I believe. Um, this is, we have different sizes of them. I'm going to use the smaller version to go around the piece because I don't need a lot of length. It's got one of these clasps at the end that you can tie off and get real tight. All right, so now what we've done is we have the first piece on there. You can see how it's above the center of gravity. We have the clasp in the front of the piece where there's recess so it can get, if it gets pushed in, it's not going to damage anything. We have, this is the back of the piece, so this will be going up against the side of the house. So there's nothing sticking off that's gonna catch anything. Hopefully this is flat. We don't put the, the clasp on the back where it could potentially catch something. And these little, those little tri uh, tips like that, make sure you pay attention to them because I know it sounds like not a big deal, but if you're trying to get this piece off the ground and it's a heavy piece and you have a clasp hitting on the side of the house and hitting the siding and catching on it, trust me, it's not good. You're gonna have to lower the piece do a whole bunch of stuff. It can get super annoying. You want to make sure you think these things through before you ever strap this up and before you bring it up the ladder. All of your prep work and thought needs to happen now so that when you actually get this thing off the ground, it's super smooth. All right, that's the key. Do the planning now. Once you lift it, it's super smooth. All right. So now the next step is we're going to run uh, what I call a safety harness around the bottom of the piece. This one's a little bit difficult to explain, but what we're trying to do is if you think about this logically, if I'm pulling up on this, this strap could theoretically lift up and go off the piece. I've seen it happen before. A company I used to work for it was doing a hoist once and they didn't take the time to run a strap underneath it. The harness came off of the piece. I watched an armoire drop approximately 12 feet, hit the ground, shatter into a thousand pieces. The customer was not happy and it was all because someone wanted to save literally a minute and a half of time. And if you think about all the time and energy that then went into after the fact, dealing with the customer, replacing the piece, the money that was spent, an absolute nightmare just to save a minute and a half of time, okay? So we're gonna run a safety strap under there. The goal is, if this gets pulled up, something's pulling it down, so literally this can't move. We're gonna be pulling up this way, there's gonna be another line pulling it down that way so it can't move. Once I show you what I've done, it will be easier to understand. Now what I've done is run a line from here, which is pulling down. It goes under the piece, around the other side, comes up here, and ties off here. And so now what I've done is provide a harness that is keeping this line here that I'm tugging on. That's the line that's going to be going up towards the sky. It's keeping it from coming off the piece. It has nowhere to go because it hits the bottom and then it gets stuck there. So now the key is that this can't come off the top of the piece and the piece falls to the ground. That's very important. That was the step that we used to skip. 
don't skip that step. It's probably the most important one. What you're basically doing is providing a cradle underneath the piece that's going to hold it in place and bring it up, okay? All right, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out the best place that we should be hoisting from. As a general rule, you want to examine the deck or whatever you're going up over. You want to see what has the least amount of obstructions, which has the shortest distance from point A to B, obviously. And then there's a lot of just like little factors. You just kind of use common sense. So in this circumstance, I would probably go over probably go over that banister for a couple of reasons. It's got a flat point down there by the door where I could hang a ladder if I need to. And also it's got the shortest distance from point A to B. So what we're going to do is tie off some straps to these posts that we can then eventually run down. I'm going to tie those up and I'll show you what it looks like. All I'm doing here is tying the ropes off. And we just send them down to where we send them down to where we're going to need to eventually tie them off to the piece once we get it over there. So now those ropes that I just showed you on the porch, they're going to, when I get the piece down there, they'll get tied off down here and over here. This isn't normally how we would do this. We would normally have the piece outside when we did all this, but I did it inside my house um, just because it was easier for instructional purposes. The lighting is a little bit better. I can control the environment a little bit better, um, and I have more room in here than I would have outside. Um, so I'm doing it in here, but I'm just trying to explain what's going on. So <clears throat> when we get this piece out there, I just told you I was going to tie them off here. I, was, I wasn't thinking correctly. What I'm going to do is tie them off back here. This is the back of the piece. It's the flat side of the piece. There's no obstructions on the back. It's just one flat side. So this will be going up. We'll tie them off to the side over here. And over here, in a perfect world, we don't have any knots or anything sticking off right here. So what we want to do is get a line here that goes up. It's tied off there so it can't move. So there's no, no obstructions on the back. That's the goal. It doesn't always work out perfectly, but that's what you're kind of shooting for. And a line over here that goes up stuck no obstructions on the back so we have a nice and flat side that's going to be going up the side of the house all right i just ran a couple more lines i'm going to show you what they are and why i did it see this yellow line that goes all the way around and then there's another one going right here that goes all the way around the reason why i did that is because when the piece comes over the railing the railing is about you know yay high ish and this piece isn't a great example because it's a smaller piece, which makes it easier to wrap for the video. I did that intentionally. But when you have to reach over a railing, if you can imagine there's a railing here that's four feet tall, and I have to reach over it like I'm doing here, and there's a long couch, for example, that might have a sleeper sofa in there or something that's really, really heavy. Getting it to this point to the top of the railing is challenging enough. But what's really, really super challenging is then having the piece come up like this and then jackknife over the railing. You're taking a tremendous amount of weight that does not want to come over the railing. It wants to go back down to the ground and you need a way to pull. You need something to grab onto. So the more lines you have down here, the more things that you can grab and physically pull, the easier it's going to be to jackknife this piece over the edge. So if you have something that's really heavy, I would highly recommend you take the time to do this. If this piece were, you know, this is only four feet tall or something. If this piece were like seven feet tall, I would take the time to run lines all the way down to the bottom because what I want to do is be able to grab, pull, grab, pull, grab, pull. And the, the more weight comes over the railing, the easier it's going to be to have something to pull onto and then pull it up like that forcefully. So I would highly recommend taking the time to do that. Run a bunch of straps. What you don't want to do is get to the point where you have this piece, you know, 30 feet up in the air, and it's literally just dangling there, and you can't get it over the railing. I've had that happen before. It's a nightmare. I had to do a third third floor um, sleeper sofa couch hoist once. 
that we got up to the third floor. It was absolutely exhausting. And then when we got it up there, we physically couldn't maneuver it through the window. And it was dangling there for, I'm not exaggerating, like 10 minutes. It was sitting outside the window and we were holding on to the thing, um, trying to figure out how to get it through the window. And it was, we just couldn't figure it out. We eventually had to lower it back down and then do it again. Um, and it was an absolute nightmare. Um, it probably could have been avoided had we taken the time to run more straps around it. Um, so take the time to do that. Again, the goal is you do the work up front so that when you actually get it off the ground, it's super easy. Um, I can't stress that strongly enough, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run what we call a safety line. And what it is, if that's the front of the piece, we're gonna run a line from down here that's gonna dangle down. And what it's gonna allow someone to do is if we have a third person hoisting with us, that person's gonna be on the ground they're going to be gently pulling on that line and what it's going to allow them to do is to control the angle that this piece rises. The thing, the piece is going to want to rise at a, at a um, parallel, parallel, perpendicular, perpendicular to the ground, 90 degrees because of gravity, obviously. If we have a line on the front of that, it's going to allow that person to pull it away from the people who are pulling from the porch. So then he can control the angle at which it goes up, which means that's important because if there's anything hanging off the side of the house that we need to avoid, trim, the edge of the deck, anything at all, loose, anything, lights, that person can control the angle. So the key here is they very gently pull it away from the side of the house and it comes up at not a 90 degree angle, which is not really what we want because we need to get it away from the side of the house. It will come at like, I don't know, let's call it like, a 75 degree angle to the side of the house. Um, it's kind of hard to explain what you're trying to do, but the key is that instead of the piece coming straight up against the side of the house, you want the piece to be coming at more of an angle up to the side. We've developed a little bit of a technique that we use to do that. We will strap a ladder to the side of the house, which makes it easy and you don't have to use the strap quite as much. The ladder does that for us. And it also allows us to take a lot of the weight off of the um, guys doing the hoist, which is important uh, for safety reasons. It allows the ladder to take the brunt of the force and allows us to pull it up in a very, very controlled manner. Um, again, it's one of those things that takes more time for sure. Uh, we strap a ladder to the side of the house. It takes time, but it's very, very um, safe for us and for the piece and for the house. And so I don't even give customers the option. I just tell them we're doing it, you know, take it or leave it. Um, and I can't tell you how often the key here is people are always all jazzed up about cost at the beginning of the job. That's like the biggest thing always. And they're all gung ho about like, they don't want to spend a lot of money. And I get that, you know, I, I get it. I really do. Not one time in my entire life have I gone through this process and taken the time to do this uh, the way that I consider to be the proper way to do it. Usually what happens is we take a whole bunch of time to do the prep work. And then when I tell you the hoist itself takes 15 seconds, maybe the customer usually doesn't even know what's come up over the side of the house. It's already up on the porch before they even know it. And then they walk around the corner and see their piece sitting there and they're amazed. Not one time has anyone ever said anything other than, Oh my God, I can't believe how easy that was. I didn't expect it to be that easy. Um, which is the key. So the point here is of this long, dumb winded story, take the time to do the work properly. Um, they'll be happy that you did it efficiently, properly, safely. You got to keep in mind when these customers hire you to do something inherently, they're taking on some liability here as am I, um, when we're the ones doing the hoist. And so you don't want to cut corners. Um, you need to understand that you're literally holding someone's life in the palm of your hands. I've been in a couple of situations doing these hoists where I was told because it wasn't my cut uh, company to do a hoist, um, in the middle of a snowstorm with porches that didn't literally didn't have banisters on them. So there was nothing holding us from going over the edge. There was one time in particular where we, and one of my former coworkers, literally almost went, went over the side of a house um, uh, because we didn't have the ability. I, I'm going to say we didn't have the ability to say no. Um, 
and we were told to do something we never should have been doing. Um, the point of the story is, uh, you don't ever want to take, you know, take risks. You don't need to take this job has risks inherent with it, but there's no sense in adding more to it. Um, take your time, be hyper aware of the fact that you got to keep everyone safe. Uh, first and foremost, that's the goal. All right. So guys, I know, uh, we're getting to the point where there's a lot of straps here and it's getting a little overwhelming. I, I understand that, but so now we have a strap tied off here. That's going to dangle down. If you see how you can pull it, it's just long, long strap, which will allow someone to, that's going to allow someone to pull it off the side of the house if need be. Okay. So that's really important because if this thing gets hung up on something, uh, on the side of the house, you need someone to be able to uh, hopefully give it a little tug and get it away from whatever it needs to get away from. All right, so what we've done here is we have a ladder going up the side of the house. Um, this is a step that not everyone's going to be able to do. We do it for um, safety reasons, and I've found that it makes things a lot easier. So obviously, make sure that uh, the ladder's at 90 degrees um, to the side of the house. You know, you do what you got to do with the angle. Uh, this angle is going to work for us. Um, it'll take a lot of the weight and then what we've done here with these straps is we're running straps to keep this thing from moving side to side this isn't a great example right now I did this real quickly for the video but the goal is that we run a strap to here this um, allows the ladder not to move because you don't want the ladder to be able to be picked up and moved when weight gets on top of it um, we're gonna do that up top there too around the ledges and that will be what really holds it in place um, once we get up there um, this one I did real quick. This is why this is all loose. I did this super quick for the purpose of the video. I would take my time and do this really well um, if we were actually doing a hoist today. You'll notice we have a blanket on the ground. Uh, that's where the piece is going to sit. We tend to throw that down um, just so the customer's furniture isn't sitting right on the ground. We're going to do the same thing up there over the ledge so uh, the ledge will be protected and the uh, piece of furniture will be protected when we bring it over there plus having the pad on there allows things to slide a lot easier over the banister. All right, so now I have the ladder tied off upstairs. You see how these are tied tied around the uh, most solid part of the uh, banister here. You wouldn't tie them around here because this is less like uh, uh, more likely to snap off. And then the goal is you see how this ladder like isn't really moving. It can't really go anywhere left or right. Um, you want to tie these down because if you are going to use a ladder uh, what's going to happen is if the piece of furniture gets hooked on that ladder, we bring what I would consider to be a really light ladder with us. Um, if you bring a really light ladder and the piece of furniture gets hooked on it, it can literally uh, pick the ladder off the ground and could potentially fall into a window or against the side of the house or damage siding or something like that. So you want to have this ladder strapped down if possible, if you are going to use it. And then the next thing we're going to do is we will throw a blanket over the banister. Sorry, hard to do with one hand. We're gonna protect the banister. All right, so now this is what the line, the pulling line is gonna look like. See how it can't move left or right, and it's tied off to the side. It's not tied off to the back. The goal is that we don't have anything in the back that's gonna obstruct us as we go up. We don't want anything catching on the side of the house. So we're gonna try to, run that off the side if possible. We want it back towards the back of the piece and off to the side, not here, but here if possible. And what that's gonna allow it to do, hopefully, is go up unobstructed up the ladder without hitting anything. So now if you look, the piece that's gonna be going up against the ladder is about as flat as we can get it, so there's no obstructions there. Now at this point we've done all our prep work. This thing is good to go. Um, it seems like a long video and it definitely is, but you gotta keep in mind that while I'm doing this, I'm doing all this instructional. I'm, I'm explaining to you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So out in the field, obviously this would go a lot quicker. Um, and again, just keep in mind when you're doing all this stuff, the tendency is to gonna, for you to be like, oh, I don't need to do this. Why am I doing this? This is too much work, blah, blah, blah. If you're doing this professionally for a moving company, or even if you're not, just try to remember that like any of these jobs you're ever going to do in your life, the prep work is usually 90% of what you're going to do. The actual activity itself is a very small percentage of time, but the key is that when we get this thing off the ground, we get it up, it's over the railing, super quick. We don't run into issues, we don't smack the side of the house, we don't hit any glass, 
We don't take the siding off the side of the house. Super, super quick. That's what it's gonna look like. So now we have the lines ready to go over here, ready to get pulled. And so now what we would do was untie these whenever the two guys were ready to start pulling. Sound good? Ready? I got you.